So the next step in your landscape lighting project is figuring out what size transformer you've gone, you've selected all your lights, you know roughly um, what your design is gonna be, but now how do you turn them on? How do you make that work? Well, a real simple way with low voltage lighting is you basically just wanna add up the wattage of all your lights. So if you've got a five watt up light and you've got 10 of them, that's gonna be 50 watts, right? So you wanna make sure that you always select a transformer that it's at least 20% higher than that because sometimes there's gonna be inefficiencies and different things like that. I'll talk about the different sizes of transformers in a bit, but as a general rule of thumb, you always wanna have a transformer that's at least 20% higher than the total amount of wattage of all your lights. In this case, on this project, we've got roughly 100 watts of lights. It's about 20 lights, and we're gonna use a 150 watt transformer because our total wattage is 100 watts. We wanna make sure it's a little bit bigger. So in this case, we're gonna use our 150 watt transformer on this project. So along with placing the lights, once I've done that, I just wanna go and, and run my wire. I'm not wiring anything yet. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up my transformer and I'm gonna <clears throat> lay my wire out to each light fixture, um, just so that I know roughly how much wire I'm gonna be using and figure out exactly how I'm gonna run it. So I'll just tie it off at some point and then start walking it out. And then the only thing you wanna make sure you do is as you're doing that at every single light, just go and leave a little extra wire. So that when you get around to wiring, you've got plenty of room to work with and then you can just go tie those tie those lights in. And once you bury your wire, it's a really good idea just to leave a little extra wire anyway, because if you ever have to go do a repair down the road or you wanna move that light, you know, five feet this way, five feet this way, well then you've got that nice extra loop of wire that you can go and do that with. So that's all I'm gonna do in this phase, guys, is basically just go for my transformer. I'm gonna walk my wire out to every single light, make sure I got lots of wire, I'm gonna leave my loops at every single light. Again, just making sure I've got lots of extra. If there's one thing I've learned, you can never have too much wire and you can never leave too much. It's usually the opposite and you'll find that you're gonna be short on wire or you don't have enough. And it might not seem like a big, big, uh, a big pain in the butt, we'll call it that, but uh, it'll save you so much headaches down the road. So lay out your wire, place your lights, and then you're gonna be ready for the next step, which is getting everything wired up. The other thing I like about these lights is that all these lights, especially the ones from FX Luminaire, not all lights are created equal, but they come with a 10 foot lead wire. So I just talked about leaving extra wire in the ground. Well, now you got another 10 feet. Uh, why that's important is your landscape's gonna change over the years. And what that allows you to do now is you can go move this light play around with it, move it in the landscape without having to rewire it, which is a pain in the butt when you gotta start digging up connections and you get the grease all over your hands. It's just not fun. So just make sure when you go to wire those lights, uh, which I'll talk about in a bit, you leave that extra wire in the ground, bury it so that it's always there that you can use it at a later date. All right guys, now the fun stuff, wiring your lights. Uh, I'm gonna recommend if you're doing this for your first time, you're not real confident, start wiring your lights from the transformer. That way you can actually wire it in and you can test them as you go to make sure you're not making any mistakes or anything like that. Do two or three lights, turn on your transformer, make sure they work. If they work, great, turn it off and then keep going. Um, it'll just save you some headaches of trying to find any shorts in the system. Uh, if you go wire everything and then you turn it on and it doesn't work, it's just easier um, to kind of test them as you go if you're not confident yet or it's the first time. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and wire our lights in now. Um, so we left our, our wire out, we left our loop, we've got some extra wire. So we're just gonna untie that now and you can see we got lots of extra room. Probably don't need all this, but it's nice to have. Um, the nice thing with low voltage wire is there is, no, um, there is no polarity, there is no plus or minus. That's a question I get all the time. If you want, go ahead, there's writing on, on the wire and you can totally do that. Um, but I'm telling you with the low voltage lights that we deal with, you don't need to worry about that. So how you get started, I've got my wire, I've got my wire cutters. I'm basically just gonna go cut that line now where this light is gonna be going in. Then I've got my two strands. I'm gonna go split those wires 
so that I've got two and I'm going to go do the same thing here. And then you only need to strip about, you know, maybe an inch or so off of the end of those wires. I like to twist them tight together. It's going to fit into the connectors better. So you'll see that in a second. I've got my wire that's coming from my transformer. So I got to go strip those wires. And then I'm going to twist those. And then the other set of wires I have is now I have the wires coming from my fixture. Now, sometimes you might see some lights that have, you know, two colors of wires and stuff. Um, it typically doesn't matter which ones you use. Again, there's no polarity that you have to worry about. So how you go connect these now is you want to make sure you're using a good waterproof connector. We like using the BVS2 water connectors for two reasons. One, they're gel filled, they're super waterproof. And two, they're really, really easy to use and really easy to install. So at every single light, I'm going to need two of these. So if you can see, there's two larger terminals or two larger ports on these and then a smaller one. The larger ones are going to be for my 12-2 wire that I've got coming out from my transformer. So I'm going to have one of those wires going in and then I've got my 12-2 wire that's going out to my next light. So I've got one of those wires going into the other terminal. And then that leaves me with one extra spot for my small 18 gauge wire that comes off my light. So I'm going to throw that in there. I'm going to push it all the way up into the gel and then I'm just going to snap that tight till I hear the click and now those wires are secure. So now I got three wires left. I got one more connector. I got three holes. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to put one of our 12-2 wires that's coming from the transformer. We're going to throw that into one. We're going to take our wire that is going out to our next light. We're going to throw that in the other terminal. And then lastly, we've got one more wire coming from the fixture that we're going to throw in the tiny hole. And then we're going to push them all nice and tight, snap that, and we're done. As an added measure, even though these connectors are nice and they'll snap those wires tight together, if you want to add an extra layer of protection to make sure that those wires are not going to come apart, I like to just zip tie my extra wire that's coming off my fixture. I don't want to cut it. I want to leave it because if I ever want to move this light, I don't want to have to rewire this. So now I got 10 feet in any direction that I can go and move this. And then I'm just going to zip tie those wires together so that I can make sure that they're not going to get pulled apart now. I'm going to go do that. Get it nice and tight. It's all waterproof. I'm going to go bury that now at the base of every light, which is something I'd recommend because now if you ever have a trouble with this light, you know where to find those connections as opposed to if you have those connections buried 10 feet away, well, you got to dig up 10 feet of wire to go find it. So bury them at the base, finish burying your light and all your wire. And then now you can move on to the next one. Okay guys, so we're still wiring our lights here. We've wired all our lights from the transformer. We've tested them and they all work great. Now I'm at my last fixture. <clears throat> and I don't have a wire that's going to another fixture. This is the end of the line. So how do I wire that last light? Well, a lot of times what people do is they'll take all the wires and they'll try and jam them all into one connection. But what that does then, all of a sudden it shorts out the system. And this happens all the time. All your lights are wired, everything's working. And then for some reason I wired that last one and now nothing works. Uh, that's typically the reason. So. I'm going to show you guys how to wire that last light on the line. So just like the previous video, we still need our two, uh, our two connectors at each fixture because we're still going to have our two sets of wire coming off our 12-2. So same thing as before, we're going to split those and we're going to strip the ends of that. And then we've got our two wires that are coming from our fixture. Right, so now what we're going to do, and this is where the math gets tricky, but now we got our connector, we got three holes, and we got another three. So we got six holes, but we only have four wires. So the way we go and wire that is now the last or the wire goes into that one terminal, and this other one stays free. And then you wire your light into that connector as well. So in this last 
light on the line, you're only gonna have two wires in the connector as opposed to three because we don't have another wire going to the next fixture. And then I've still got two wires left. I'm gonna take my connector, I'm gonna put the big wire in the big hole, the small wire in the small hole, and snap that tight and voila, we're done. That's how you go and end the line. Um, you wanna make sure you still have two connections at every single fixture, even that last one. The only thing is on the last one, you're gonna have an extra hole. Sometimes what you can do is say, you know that you're probably gonna put another light down the road. Well, you can always run another wire out to the field and then just end it with two of these. But make sure when you do that, same thing. Say this was, we didn't know if we were gonna put a light down here or add a light later. So we're just gonna run our wire, our 12-2 wire down the line and then we're just gonna cap it off with this so we make sure no water or anything gets in it. But then when we're ready to go add a light later, now we can just open these up and then we can come and we can plug our fixture into this and add that extra light. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, last light on the line, you still need two connectors. There's just gonna be an extra hole in each connector. Okay guys, we're at a point now here where we're running all our lights. We've got most of our lights along the house but I got a section of only four lights over there. Well, I don't wanna have to run wire all the way back around to those lights. So a question I always get asked is, well, can I T into the line somewhere? Yes, absolutely you can. And that's what we're gonna do here. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. You can use this same principle if you're coming off of a transformer and you wanna run a line that way and a line this way, you can T at the bottom of the transformer too, but I'm gonna show you how to go do that. So. We've got our wire that's running across and we've got our wire that we're gonna send out to that new area. So same as before, we're gonna split those wires and then we're gonna strip the ends of those. You know, again, roughly about an inch or so off the end of those. So that's our line that's going out to our four lights off in the distance. And then we've got our continuous line here that we're just gonna cut into <coughs> and we're gonna make our T. So same thing, we're gonna split we're gonna strip the ends off our line that's coming from our lights. And then we've got our line that's going to the rest of the lights. And then we've got our other line that's going to our other four lights. So now I got three sets of 12-2 wire. But we can't use these connectors now because we only got two holes for the 12-2 and we got a small hole for our fixture. So this is not gonna work, so we can't use that. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use these. We're gonna use these DBRY connectors. Again, waterproof, gel filled. Um, these are pretty much bulletproof once you get them installed. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tee in. So we've got one wire coming from our fixtures, one wire that's going out to our fixtures, and then we got that third line now that's going out to our other set of fixtures. We're just gonna twist all those together. And then we're gonna throw our marette on there and twist those all together. And then we're gonna take our tube that's full of gel. We're gonna open that up. There's even slots for the marette that you can just slide it right on top. Push it all the way to the end so that everything fills up so you're not gonna get water in there and then you just snap that tight. And those wires are not coming out of there. And then you still got your three, three other sets of wires or two other sets of wires here. We're gonna go and we're gonna put all those together. And the reason again that you can't do this with our little BVS2 connectors is because the three holes in there are not big enough to hold three of the 12 gauge wires. So we need to use a bigger connector. So again, we're going to twist all those together with our marette. We're going to open up our gel filled tube. We're going to push that into our tube and then we're just going to snap that tight. And voila. So again, we've got our wires coming from our lights going out to our lights 
on both ends. We've just teed into the line. You can use this at the base of the transformer too if you don't want to run two lines directly from the transformer. Or maybe you have, um, you have a transformer that does, doesn't have a terminal big enough to run two sets of wires. You can drop it down, tee it off to the front and the back, but you want to make sure you're using these connectors because they're going to be big enough to handle all the wires. Okay guys, so we've gone, we've placed all our, we've picked our lights, uh, we know what size transformer we're gonna use, we've placed all our lights, we've wired everything, now we wanna go and test it. And like I mentioned in earlier videos, if you're new to the kind of the whole wiring process, it's a good idea to go maybe do this step first and then go and start wiring your lights so that you can turn your transformer on and then you can test and make sure your lights are working as you go. But uh, really simply to go over it again, the transformer is basically what takes um, your power from your 120 volt in your house that you're going to plug it, this into and converts it to low voltage, which is what makes it so easy to go and put in this, this system. Again, if you're trying to select your transformer, you just want to make sure that it's about 20% larger than the total wattage of all your lights. So again, if we have 20 lights that are 5 watts each, that's 100 watts. So I want to make sure I have a transformer that's at least 120 watts or higher. You don't need to use a super big transformer. If you're using good quality LED lights, it doesn't matter if your transformer is 150 watts and you only have 60 watts of lights on it. That was more of a concern when you had halogen systems. You had to be very precise and very careful with how much power you were uh, outputting to each light. The other thing you want to make sure of when you're selecting your transformer, the ones that we use are always good outdoor stainless steel ones. Try and stay away from anything that's plastic uh, just because sometimes they generate heat and if they get too much heat, the plastic's going to wear out a lot sooner than a stainless steel one. The other thing you want to check for is you want to make sure that you have a 15 volt tap. Now, why would I have a 15 volt tap for 12 volt landscape lighting system? Well, again, if you're using a good landscape lighting system, most of those lights are designed to work anywhere from 10 to 15 volts. Uh, and why that's important is there's something called voltage drop. I'm not gonna get into a bunch of that right now. Go search Lighting Doctor on YouTube, voltage drop, and I go through some videos and some charts on how to figure that out, but it's real simple. Uh, and a general rule of thumb, you can run up to 100 watts of light on a 300 foot line of 12-2 low voltage wire without running into enough voltage drop to cause any issues. Um, so why do you want to start at a 15 volt tap then? Because here now I start at 15 volts, which means if my lights will operate all the way down to 10 volts, then I can lose five volts along that whole line, which is why I can put so many lights on such a long run of wire. With halogen systems, you couldn't do that because you had to make sure every light operated between 11 and 12 volts, which means you had to use um, different terminals and all kinds of stuff like that. So a lot of you guys that have transformers that have multiple terminals, 14, 15, 12, 13 volts, um, that was designed more for halogen systems. You don't really have to worry about that. But starting with a 15 volt tap is very important. And again, super simple. I've got my 12-2 wire that I've split. All I gotta do is I just gotta go wire that into these terminals now. And again, there's no polarity. So it doesn't matter if there's writing on one and not on the other and how you wire them in the field. As long as each terminal and every light has two wires going to it, then you're not gonna have a problem. But basically all you need to do is back these screws off and then you're just gonna go and push your wires up into those terminals, one in the common tap Tighten that down, and then I'm gonna put one in my 15 volt tap, tighten that down, and then you're basically good to go. Now you can go and test your lights. Um, the transformer like this just has a simple on off switch, <clears throat> is a manual, but I'm gonna tell you guys and show you guys how to go and control that with either a photo cell or a smart timer. Okay guys, one of the last steps now is controlling your transformer. How do I go do that? Our transformer has a simple on off switch. Um, but you don't want to be coming out in the middle of the night flicking your transformer on and off. So two options. One, uh, a simple option. I'm not a huge fan of photocells because they tend to fail, but it's basically going to read the sunlight and it's going to turn your lights on and off with dusk and dawn. Super easy to just basically 
plug into your transformer. And then there's a little cutout here um, that you just leave this out and then it's gonna read the sun and uh, dawn and dust settings and it's gonna turn your lights on and off for you. So that's a real simple way of doing it. Um, but the only downside to that is you can't put your transformer inside and you gotta be careful that it's not in too shaded of a spot. What we like to use is we like to use a smart plug. Now this is the one that we use, this one's from Wyon. Uh, it works great, it lasts outside. It's got an extra outlet too, so that if you wanted to go plug your Christmas lights in, you can do that and you can all run it on the same app. Um, so that's why I like this, I know that it works, but you can use any smart timer. And basically, two options, you can either plug it inside the transformer <coughs> or you can plug it outside the transformer. If you don't have great Wi-Fi, you might wanna plug it outside the transformer. But if you're gonna plug it in the transformer, you basically just take this plug out, plug your timer in there, and then you take this plug and you plug it back into your timer. And then you're gonna close that up in there, and then you're good to go download the app, go through the steps. You can still set dawn and dust settings, so it just goes on with sunlight, but now it's gonna use your geographic location as opposed to having a photo cell that has to read the sun. But you can also have up to five other timer options with the smart timer. That's why I like it. You can turn your lights on and off from anywhere. Uh, it's a great option. If you don't have great Wi-Fi and you can't put it inside the box because maybe it's not reading it, well, it's pretty simple. You can just go plug it into the wall, into your outlet, and then your plug that's coming off your transformer, you just plug that into your timer, you plug that into the wall, leave this in the on position, and then everything's gonna run through your timer. So again, if you have a smart system and you already have smart plugs, well then you can just go plug your transformer into that, leave this in the on position, and then you can operate it on the same platform that you already have. And that's a simple way to go and make your transformer a smart transformer. Okay guys, and the last step, you know, we've done it in the beds, we've kept it along the edge. Sometimes we'll have to go across the grass. This is the one area you wanna get it a little bit deeper. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna get hit by uh, an aerator or anything like that if you have to run the wire through the grass. But again, as much as possible, try and keep it to the edges. Um, but all we use is a simple uh, flat spaded shovel. And basically all I'm doing is I'm cutting a little slit in the grass and kind of flicking that up. We used to do this a lot with irrigation too, where I can get about eight inches deep. I can flick that grass up just enough so that I can tuck either my pipe or my wire in there. And then all I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna slide my wire into that crack now. And that's where our, um, I used to call it a wire poker, but now I've learned it's a weed puller tool. You can go get at any home and garden aisle, of any home improvement store. And it's great because now I can push that wire nice and deep down in the grass. Whereas if I didn't have this, I gotta try and flip this up. And depending on what kind of lawn you have, that can be a lot of work. But once you get that down there, pretty simple. Go pack that down. And then within a couple days, you're not even gonna see that anymore. Your wire's buried, your lights are in, your system's complete. You've taken some pictures, you've sent them back to me so that we can look and see how everything goes, make any recommendations. I hope you guys learned a ton about how to go install your low voltage landscape lighting system. If you need more help, go to lightingdoctor.ca, check out all our videos, take advantage of our free consultation, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, and keep learning. Thanks guys for watching.